My name's Johnny Carson, and this program is called The Squirrel's Nest. Now there's a hornet's nest over old pals getting a cold shoulder when they try to say goodbye. Entertainment Tonight has the story for this Friday, May 15, 1992. Everybody, thank you for joining us. I'm Mary Hart for one more day here in New York. John? Hi, Mary. I'm John Tesh here in Hollywood. The king of late night TV is abdicating his throne, and while many big stars are visiting on the Tonight Show couch, some other loyal subjects are up in arms over being snubbed. Would you welcome Miss Elizabeth Taylor? Stars like Elizabeth Taylor and Michael Douglas have been lining up to bid farewell to Johnny Carson. And outside the NBC studios in Burbank, loyal fans are camping out for tickets to his final shows. I hopped on a plane and came right out knowing that my good friend Johnny was going to leave very soon. Except for what he says on his show, the characteristically private Carson is keeping mum about the whole thing. He hasn't cooperated with those who want to pay tribute, and he's done no interviews. Even his old TV station in Omaha, Nebraska, was shut out, according to anchorman Gary Kerr. Carson just said, look, I've got this stack of requests right here. I feel like if I'm going to do one, I've got to do them all, and I just don't want to do that. My name's Johnny Carson, and this program is called The Squirrel's Nest. Sometimes Carson hosted an afternoon TV show on WOWT in the early 50s and began his career there as a radio announcer. The station will be airing a salute to Carson, even without a current interview, but they're not happy about it. I wish that he would have done it, naturally, but he said no, and there really isn't anything you can do about it. Carson also didn't talk to Life magazine for a cover story on his career, but he did cooperate with photographer Harry Benson. Oh, I think it's Life magazine. I think, um, you know, he, he was comfortable with me. Joan Rivers got less than she'd hoped for. She wasn't invited to say goodbye to Carson, even though she was the first woman to fill in as host. Joan gave a tearful tribute to Johnny on her way. talk show. The show changed my life. I am totally grateful. I wouldn't be wearing this watch. I wouldn't be wearing this charm bracelet. I wouldn't be having this show without it. Even Steve Cox, the man who's written a new book about Carson's career, says Johnny agreed to chat with him only briefly. He was serious. He was kind of quiet, polite, uh, and uh, very nice. And uh, I, was, uh, I was very nervous on the telephone with him. So what does the Tonight Show say about all of this? Well, a spokesman told Entertainment Tonight that just like the man from Omaha said, if Johnny did agree to do one interview, he'd have to do them all. And he didn't want to say yes to some and no to the others. You know, over the years, some of the world's biggest stars have appeared on the Tonight Show, but it was the little people, the guy next door with a unique hobby or a talent that made Johnny Carson really shine. Today's Inside Story takes a look back over those years of Tonight. To live to be 100, that first Johnny's show will be the most memorable thing, you know, in my life. Stan Can was a part-time musician from St. Louis, Missouri, when he was invited on The Tonight Show way back in 1966. How did you get started on this kind of a gig? Eight years old. Can is just one of many ordinary citizens who were among Carson's thousands of guests. Can's talent, he had a collection of antique vacuum cleaners. Can, who says he's been on 51 times, says his debut was a heartstopper. Now, this was one of the early canisters. <laughs> Nothing worked. The machines were put together wrong because they wouldn't allow me to put them together. And uh, I was embarrassed. It was, if the audience was in hysterics, Johnny was in hysterics, and I was ready to cry. And at one point, I bit my cheek. Joan Embry came to The Tonight Show from the San Diego Zoo. I was incredibly nervous. Embry is an animal expert and has appeared on The Tonight Show with everything from birds to snakes. The most famous visit of all, however, was a hair-raising guest shot by a tiny creature called a marmoset. If you turn sideways, it's cute how the tail is just... He's wonderful to work with because he always has total control, and I've never worked with anybody so quick on their feet and witty and able to rise to the occasion. You're just getting comfortable. Well, I can't sit here with a I can't sit and talk to people with an animal on my head. Embry's visit with the marmoset was just one of 59 she made to the show, bringing more than 300 different animals. Was that, was he spitting? Was that saliva? When the animals come, Johnny knows this is a time where you just roll with the punches. Johnny Carson also rolled with the punches when Chicago native Lasta, the self-proclaimed international polka queen, dashed onto a set for a bear hug just before she played a unique rendition of the Beatles' Twist and Shout. <laughs> is boundless in her praise of her Johnny. I tell you, 
I haven't been even scared because he made me so comfortable. And I had a feeling that he believed in me. What, what's your favorite indoor plant? Oh, I don't have one. One that doesn't die on me. <laughs> 83-year-old Thalassa Crusoe was also a favorite of Carson's. She was the fabled plant lady. Invited on the show 22 times, she says she played her act seriously. When I was getting something done, and he suddenly come and put his hand in it, I would push him off. When he got in the way, I only had so much time. There were other people waiting to come on. Sure you laugh, but you won't be laughing soon, folks. <laughs> but perhaps the best known of all Carson's citizen guests was Piedmont, California teacher Leonard Waxdeck, who brought his bird-calling A students back year after year for 17 years. He always called his host Mr. Carson. I would just like to thank him for what I feel he has done, not only for the bird-calling, but he has done more for the image of students in the United States. The students' grades and activities were always noted. The student on the right won nine varsity letters, but there was always room for the mighty Carson humor, especially after these two high school tennis stars completed their act. What an interesting double date those girls would have. So like the thousands of celebrities and superstars who sat down next to Johnny Carson, these ordinary folks and a lot of others like them will remain lifelong fans of their host. I'm just honored that I can call him my friend. I'm going to miss him tremendously. It's, it's just a big part. It's a big part of my life. So many great moments. Johnny Carson's final show is a week from tonight, and then Jay Leno takes over as Tonight Show host the following Monday.